Hello, I'm Greg Redcape, Redcape Mods, and in today's video we'll be doing something that's been a long time coming. And um, what we're going to be doing today is showing you off most of my Mac collection. Not all of it's here, and uh, before we go into showing everything off, I'll go through a quick tally of things off the top of my head that we don't have here. Um, so that will be fun. <laughs> I have to try to remember them all. But uh, a lot of people have been asking, especially my uh, Patreon um, supporter, VMC. He uh, wanted to see this uh, tour for a long time now, and I really want to get it out. I've been wanting to do it for a few weeks now, but um, I really wanted to get all my Macs back together to film them. And uh, that's not where happening anytime soon. So I'm going to try to keep a tally of everything down here. Um, and... Uh, I'm trying to decide which Macs I'm going to count because I have a few parts systems that I don't want to count, but a few actually work. So I'll have like maybe a parts system section too. It's going to be really weird and confusing for me anyway. I'll try to make it pretty not confusing for you. But today, I, I, I originally wanted to make this video and explain what I use for each system, but it's going to take too long. We're going to go over the specs mostly. Uh, a few of them will have background stories. In fact, I've already filmed the Macs that I have next door um, because I haven't moved them over here yet. Um, so you'll get to see those first before we get on to all the rest of this. But first off, I want to cover the Macs that aren't here right now that I can remember that I have that I haven't covered in the video I already filmed. Uh, so that counts out one of them that I already mentioned later on in this video which I've already filmed. Yeah, it gets confusing, doesn't it? But anyway, let's get to it. Um, first Macs I don't have. Um, Michael Stanhope has my um, Revision D, I think it is, um, Trayload Blueberry iMac uh, in original box. It's a 333, I think. Um, he also was going to give me an Indigo, which I think he's already given away, so we're not counting that. Uh, I think that's all Mike has. And then um, Jay has, oh, what does he have of mine? He has a ATI Graphics 1 gigahertz uh, eMac, um, which uh, was the very last uh, and uh, most powerful all-in-one Mac system to uh, run OS 9 natively. Um, it doesn't work and it's really heavy. That's why he never shipped it to me. I have to actually go get that in person. He also has, uh, I want to say a Graphite G3 uh, slot load iMac and uh, he has my Quicksilver 800, which uh, I gave to him, but I think he wants to give back to me, so we're going to count it. Uh, he doesn't want it. He doesn't like Quicksilvers. And he probably has something else, but I can't think of it right offhand. Um, Colin Mister has my 15-inch uh, uh, G4 high-res power book, which he's going to make the world's fastest one day. Uh, we haven't gotten around to actually doing that. Um, so he's got that. I've done videos on that before. Um, then, let's see here, he's got my uh, world's fastest mid-20... 12 13 inch MacBook Pro, uh, which he fried the board on trying to swatch, swap the CPU. So that project has failed. But we're going to get it working again. In fact, he's supposed to have it with him at school right now and he's going to fix it for me. We got another logic board that had some water damage. Anyway, I'm, I'm getting off topic. We're trying to move this video along. This is going to be a very long video. So. That's going to be coming back, but it's not, no longer going to be the world's fastest because it's just going to have a 2.9 in it. Um, but still, he's got that, and he probably has a few others. He's got the, he's got like 50 logic boards of um, the world's fastest iMac G4, but I've got most of the parts here, so we're not going to put that in the tally yet. We will when I get it, when we film that. And I think that might be all the systems he has currently of mine. Not really sure. Uh, Ken from the Computer Clan has my um, G4 clamshell, and he also has the world's fastest 2009 Mac Mini. 
Um, he's going to mail those back to me eventually. And I want to say that's all of them. Um, I'm probably missing a few. But I think that's all of them that aren't with me right now. Uh, also, I do have up at my old house, I still have my original Quicksilver, the uh, dual 1 gigahertz, uh, which is currently fried. I'm going to count that because I'm going to eventually fix it. Uh, I also have a few part systems I'm not counting. Uh, I've got parts MDD and um, I think that's about it. I also have one of Jay's parts MDDs up there too. Um, I think that's all that's up there. So that's all those Macs that aren't here, I think. So now let's go next door to show you the video I've already filmed. I filmed it last night uh, of the Max I haven't carried over here yet. And then we'll start with the Max over here. And forewarning, I'm still moving into this place. And there's still a bunch of dead outlets on the back wall of this studio. Uh, so the studio is nowhere near being set up yet. That's why there's such a big mess right here, because I don't feel like moving things around. You'll see over here, it's a giant mess over here, too. It's, it's, it's pretty messed up. Plus, all the filth you see in here, not counting the max. The max is my filth. But all the rest of the filth you see in there was left here by my dad, because he used this building mostly for storage. Um, so a lot of the filth you see in there is his mess, not mine and I haven't finished sorting it. Um, it's going to take probably a year to sort it all and make it to the point where you can actually walk through it without stepping over stuff. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> but yeah, uh, let's, uh, let's go next door. You guys see that video, and then we'll um, get on to the Macs that are in this room, and then the Macs that are in that room, and then I think that will be everything. So let's get to it. Okay, so let's start with the first Mac I ever used. The first computer I ever used as a toddler. Um, my dad's Macintosh Plus. And as we can see here, it's in rough shape and has something sticking out the disk drive. Um, when I was a, a little uh, kid, probably two years old if that, I had this uh, Sesame Street phone that actually had these little plastic discs that were the size of a floppy disk. You'd put the disc into the phone and you could hear the character's uh, voice. And um, I actually kind of remember doing this. It's one of my earliest childhood memories. I thought I could um, see Big Bird on the screen if I uh, stuck the disc into the floppy drive and uh, the disc went in, it never came back out. And my dad tried everything to pull it out, he just never could get it out. So through the years, I tried to fix this thing and never could. Um, but I was a stupid kid at the time. So this is his Mac Be Cool, pretty rare thing here, but as a stupid kid, I was probably 10 the first time I tried to open this thing. And not having the right tools to get these screws out, I tried to pry it open. That didn't work. Uh, <laughs> but I did eventually get the screws out. Um, just after I graduated college, I tried to open it up and see if I could figure out how to work on it. And just finally gave up because all the caps and stuff had gone bad. This thing sat up in an attic for a long time and the battery exploded in it and it's just, it, it's, it's fried. But I'm going to keep this for probably the rest of my life because it's a very big memory of mine. This was the first Mac. Uh, and technically it's in a way because dad basically didn't want it and tried to throw it away. This was basically my first Mac, period, um, because I ended up with it. I didn't want him to throw it away, even when I was a little kid. So Macintosh Plus was the first one. And then I've got one up at my house, my old house, the one that I unboxed a few years ago, which is fully functional and has a 
almost, well, I wouldn't say it's a new Mac Be Cool, but it's a, 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 a nicer one. And it's complete with the locking clip and everything. Um, I'll have to bring that down still. Um, I couldn't in one of my last trips up there, um, so I'll, I'll have to bring it in the next trip. So I've got two Macintosh Pluses, and this was the first Mac I ever used. So, yeah. Okay, so here are some systems that I haven't taken next door yet, or haven't taken back next door yet. And we're going to quickly go over the specs of them really fast and um, just kind of hammer this out as quickly as possible. So here we have a 216 megahertz G3 PowerBook 1400C. Here is a part system that I think actually works, but I bought it just for case parts for this. Uh, it is a 1400C133. Here we have a 14 inch iBook G3 900 my PowerBook G4 500. I've got two of these. This is the first one. My 2.6 gigahertz early 2008 15 inch MacBook Pro. The world's fastest unibody MacBook uh, 2008 model, which Colin built. This is a 3.06. This I got off of Jay Vry. I haven't really tested it a whole lot yet. It's a mid-2009 MacBook Pro. Uh, not really sure about the specs on that one. And then these two right here were in that one series I did. This is the 15-inch early 2009, uh, 2.93 gigahertz. And this is the late our uh, mid mid 2009 15 inch 3.06 gigahertz here is my 2009 5.1 flashed mac pro which is also the topic of uh, season three of the mac pro series which i need to get back to but this is my editing rig and happens to be um, sitting in my kitchen where i edit because i have to watch my dogs and stuff uh, this is the easiest place to edit. So here's that. Okay, so here we are in my former temporary editing room in my house. And here are some more systems I haven't brought back over. This room's a mess because this is where I drop off stuff that I want to take next door but don't want to do right now. Um, so there's a big pile of stuff that needs to go next door. But... Um, a lot of this is stuff that needs to go next door. So we'll start off with the XR Braid, which isn't a Mac, but it's part of the collection that goes with these two. These are G4 XRs. This is the tray load dual 1.0 and the slot load dual 1.33. And then we've got the fastest, slowest iMac here, the 1.6 uh, 17 inch G5 and then right over here we have my Firewire 800 MDD dual 1.5 uh, which has been running over in this room for the last uh, probably a few months um, I it, it serves and does a bunch of things over here um, and it's, it's working fine, except occasionally it will overheat and freeze. I need to add an extra fan to it, but uh, it's eventually going to probably go next door, and I'm probably going to move something else over here that's more reliable. Okay, so now we're in Dad's man cave downstairs of the house, uh, where I have the last bit of Max there over here before we go next door. So let's cover these last, I think it's five Macs. I think that's all the Macs in this house. I'm, 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 I'm thinking that's all of them. So here is the system I got off of Josh Lambert. Uh, it's a dual 2.0 mid 2003 G5. It's, it works great. It's in really good shape and uh, it's a, a project, uh, it's coming up in the future when I get better CPUs for it. Um, so I, I'm not going to go into detail about it, but here's that. And then here's the G3 Molar Mac I just unboxed. And it's, 
it, it works great. It's in good shape. It's going to be a pain in the rear end to get next door. Um, but it's, it's, it's here. <laughs> and I'm not going to pull these out, but here are two other G5s. Here's my G5 Quad, uh, which I use a lot down here for retro gaming um, online and stuff. It works fine. I've done videos on that. Here is the uh, single 1.8 that I just unboxed. And as we can see, it's very bent, but I did make over half the money back on it. So I'm not complaining too much. It's It works. I've tested it. It works totally fine. Um, and I will eventually be filming a video on fixing it somehow. I don't know how I'm going to fix it yet, but... Um, like I said, it works. It's just, it's, it's got one heck of a lean on it. And to the last Mac. Okay, and here is where I do most of my live streams. I do most of them on this Mac Mini right here. This is my late 2014 Mac Mini that I've done many videos on. This is a 3 gigahertz, um, 2 core, 4 thread, i7, and, um, it works pretty darn good for live streaming and it's sitting right here right now it's not next door um, because I need it for live streaming but it will be going next door for future videos and tests but right now it's a live streaming box and I believe that's every Mac in this house so let's head back next door and actually start going through my Macs okay so let's start off next door with what i have right here right here we have my first g3 kanga from ralph um, this is a 250. second g3 kanga from ralph this is also a 250. Um, they all were 250s i think and ralph said he's going to actually send me parts to fix this because he has a pair of parts laying around he saw the video he felt bad etc etc so thank you ralph so here are my two G3 Kangas. And then this is a first generation MacBook Pro Core Duo 2.16. Works totally fine. Runs Snow Leopard and Windows 10 on it. Um, I will do a video on this one day, but not yet. Um, right here we have the custom uh, 2.5 dual core uh, late 2005 G5. And then... Like I have warned you, the uh, studio is pretty messy. This is also a uh, behind the scenes look of what it looks like in here. Uh, currently, it's going to look very different when I can actually move stuff in here properly. But um, yeah, it's it's a giant mess. Uh, like my vintage 70s Miller Lite sign there, it's lidded. It, it, it has a light in it, so it, it, it has a backlight and it glows. Pretty fun. I uh, rebuilt that in college, but that's not a Mac, so we're not going to talk about that. Here we have my mid-2010 uh, MacBook. I can't remember the speed on it. It's like a 2.4 gigahertz, I think. Uh, I got this for like uh, 23 bucks a few years ago, um, and the only thing it needed was a new battery, and it's nearly mint. It's in really, really good shape. Um, it's in a little worse shape than it was when I first got it because I've been using it. But uh, this is the go-to si uh, system when I have internet over here to look up tutorials and stuff. That and my iPad, but still. Here's that. And then we have the iMac G4 I just unboxed. We're going to count this as a Mac because if you put a working hard drive in it, it would still work. Um, we're not going to count this as a part system, even though it's going to be converted soon. This is a 1 gigahertz, 17 inch. So we got that. Here we have my um, built, uh, custom built mid-2007 iMac 20 inch. Um, this is a 266. Um, real fun. And then another 266. This is the early 2008 iMac 20 inch. And then another 266, this is the early 2009 iMac uh, 21 inch, or 20 inch, 20 inch. Okay. And then we have the quad core um, 2.6 i7 uh, mid 2012, or late 2012, late 2012 Mac Mini. 
uh, to uh, mid-2011 um, Mac Minis. These are the base model 2.3 dual cores um, and the ones that are fully compatible with the patcher. Um, one of those will end up in the iMac. And then we have the most powerful mid-2010 Mac Mini ever made. This is the 2.66 um, and fully functional, and uh, it's already been upgraded. I upgraded this because I was going to turn this into my streaming box, and it just did not want to do it, so I didn't. <laughs> so uh, we'll do a video on that eventually. Then here's one system that I named Dan after Dan Bashir um, because he wanted one of these things, and he I basically got talked into buying one. This is a 17-inch, early 2003, uh, 1 gigahertz uh, PowerBook G4, and this is the most powerful OS 9 compatible uh, PowerBook ever made. It's not officially supported, but with one quick little hack, all the hardware except for the Wi-Fi card, and I think there's Bluetooth in it, except for the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth is 100% compatible, minus the fact that the Ethernet port runs at, um, at uh, 10 megabits a second. But other than that, it's still 100% compatible down to graphics. It's the most powerful system, um, but you do have to also trick it into um, running the audio too, which you just stick something in the headphone jack, and then the speakers turn on. It's, it's weird, but... It's a fun system. I've been actually using this also for tutorials and stuff because uh, when my internet goes out, this thing um, can usually still stay on the network for some weird reason. So we've got that. That's laying here. We'll move over here. And I'll be doing a video on this again in the future. This was my 867 megahertz um, PowerBook Titanium, and I happened across a uh, PowerBook uh, G4 part system, uh, really, really cheap, with a 1 gigahertz board in it. The case was completely trashed and mangled, but the board was like brand new. It was really clean on the inside. Just the outside looked terrible. So I swapped boards, and now this is a 1 gigahertz. Then we've got some stuff that Jay sent me. Uh, which I'll have to actually read the stickers probably to tell you the differences on them. And they're still dirty because I haven't done anything to them yet. Here we have a 1.07, uh, one, yeah, 1.07 gigahertz, uh, 12 inch iBook G4. And then we have a 1.2 gigahertz, 12 inch iBook G4 which needs a lot of work, and it's really yellowed. Then we have uh, a 14 inch iBook G3. This is a uh, 800 megahertz, I think. And then this is a, supposed to be a part system, but it's fully functional, so uh, we're going to count it as not a part system. This is a one gigahertz, 14 inch iBook G4. Pretty fun. So let's uh, get these out of the way so that we have weight on them. I stack them about too high for most systems. So over here we have my G3 clamshell prototype. Right there. Pretty cool. Set this off where it can't get hurt. Then right here is a, I'm not sure which system this is. What is this, my Pismo? Yeah, this is my Pismo G4. Um, 550 giga, uh, gigahertz, yeah, that'd be fast. 550 megahertz um, G4 that Colin built. Pretty fun system. Uh, it's been having some problems though. I gotta figure out what's going on. I think it's probably a RAM issue. Um, and then, I don't know which one of these systems is actually my system, um, but here are three 17-inch uh, MacBook Pros. This one feels awfully light. Yeah, this is one of the empty ones. This is a part system. This is a part system. And then this 
is my 17 inch, which needs a lot of TLC. Uh, we're going to probably be moving this all over into that case. Um, this is a fully functional system other than the GPU, um, and the case is just beat to heck. So, yeah, we've got that. Move these back over. I really shouldn't be stacking them all on the working system, but oh, whatever. And then behind all these is my Firewire 400 uh, G4 MDD uh, dual 1.5 gigahertz that I put the zip drive into and need to continue the Mac Oddware series on. Um, you guys have seen this in a lot of videos. It's gone through multiple power supplies in its lifetime. It's a fun machine and really expensive. <laughs> and then we got the uh, 1.8 gigahertz 17-inch uh, iMac G5 that I just unboxed recently that came with the original box. And it is, um, it needs recapped really badly. And this is at the, actually the back wall, which has no power, by the way. So, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, let's move into the next room. And I apologize for the lighting, but not all my lights work in this house for some reason. Right here we have my other, uh, this is the one that I've had the longest. This is my other dual two gigahertz iMac, uh, iMac, Power Mac G5, uh, dual two gigahertz mid 2003, fully functional, other than the fact that it always whines because it's, I don't know what's going on with the fan system, uh, but it, it works totally fine other than the fact the fans always are running really high. Even with the calibration, it won't calibrate. I'm not sure what's going on with it, uh, but eh, it works. Then, uh, with a bunch of stuff stacked on top of it, we have my dual 2.7 G5, which is currently broken. Uh, but we'll count that because it sort of still works. It, it won't run right now, uh, but once I get the CPUs fixed, it will run. Here we have the mid-2011 iMac 21.5 uh, inch. Um, it's an i5. I think it's a 2.5 gigahertz. Uh, I've done that one video on the GPU upgrade on. It needs to be filmed more, and we will be filming it more. Uh, I just haven't yet. And um, it's going to have a lot more history going on with it. So that's going to be fun. And here we have a Sonnet 1.2, I think. Yeah, Sonnet 1.2 sitting on top of and a RAM sim. Or not sim, so dim. Um, this is junk so just toss that what do we have here this is this looks like my it doesn't have a drive in it anymore because that's in the prototype um, but this would be my g3 400 um, lombard so we got that and this is a part system right here this is a wall street um, g3 uh, 300. Uh, this is a PDQ, and the um, card's going to be going into my Wall Street, uh, so I can have a 300. This supposedly doesn't turn on. I've never actually tested it, but I've been pulling parts from it, so um, it's a part system. And then under it, this is probably my other Lombard. Let's see if it is. Yeah. This is a Lombard G3 333. Um, I have both Lombard models. <laughs> we'll go with that. So, yeah. So, let's stick these back over here. Put that back up here. And, might as well put that there. And then, here we have the Black Book that I built a few months ago. There's nothing wrong with it. 
It's just this really, really filthy. And I haven't gotten around to figuring out a way to clean it because even though I cleaned it when I made the video, the <laughs> keyboard is full of tabby cat hair. And when I say full of, I mean it's like a quilt of tabby cat hair in it. You can't get it out the keyboard. I'm going to need a new top case because it's just too nasty. No matter what I do to clean it, I cannot get the hair out of it and it tickles to type on it, which is not good, especially if you're allergic to cats. I'm not, but if I had this, like for instance, at my mom's house, my mom would throw a fit. So I have never finished the uh, video build on this. Um, I'm, I'm going to revisit it, uh, but not yet. This is a early 2009, or no, mid-2009 MacBook um, in a early 2008 case. This is a 2.16 gigahertz. Then we have what started the channel back up right here. And this is still fully functional. This was uh, folding 24-7 for me for months, but the internet kept dropping out and I finally gave up on it. Um, and, oh look, the internet's actually on. I could turn it back on, but I'll have a monitor over here right now for it. This is it's still actually plugged into the wall, but um, it's, it's been having some issues. The uh, Mac VidCards um, GT120, the fan stopped working on it. I have no clue why. The card still works, but I don't want it to melt, so I took it out and now it's stuck in Windows mode. I could force it into Mac OS, but eh, it folds better in Windows anyway. So when I finally get around to fixing this thing, it's still fully functional. Um, 32 gigs of RAM, uh, dual quad, um, three gigahertz, pretty fun still. So we got that. Then we got the topic of the iMac G4 uh, vintage Apple uh, vault. Um, video, the uh, G4 817 inch. Um, that thing still works totally fine, works great. It's just sitting here right now. And then we have the world's fastest iMac G4's top case, um, which the LCD is blown out in it right now. Um, so literally the only thing in it is the SSD and the optical drive and a bunch of wires. Um, the LCD is trashed, and I, I have to get a replacement. I just never got around to it. There's no point. There's the bottom of the case, uh, but there's no logic board in it. But that would be counted as a system because eventually one day it will run again. And then we have the 1.25 gigahertz 17-inch iMac G4 that um, uh, Redactit sent to me. And uh, it's, it works totally fine. It just needs the panel put back on there, the, um, the bezel. Uh, and it will eventually be fully functional. And come to think of it, I, I forgot another Mac um, that I don't have here right now. And I'll just spoil it now. I will be unboxing another 17-inch 1.25 gigahertz in the original box um, whenever I go and get it. It's sitting at my mother's house right now. So yeah, I'll eventually be unboxing another one. So there's another Mac. Then here we have my late 2005 iSight uh, iMac G5. Um, I forget which size this is. Uh, 21 inch, uh, 21.5, something like that. 20 inch? 20 inch. It'd be a 20 inch. It's a 20 inch. Um, Jay Vry gave me that, and uh, it was almost fully functional except for the firewire ports are blown out in the back of it because of a cap problem, I think. I need to take it apart and recap those two caps that control that. And also this thing collapsed on a table um, and busted the LCD, so the LCD's busted. This was sitting with that. This is a first generation. Um, iMac 4, 1, 20 inch Core Duo. Uh, I can't remember what speed it is. It's like a, a 2 gigahertz or something like that. This is like a 2.1. Um, this also was on that table and the LCD also didn't survive because they both went face first into the floor. 
um, wasn't pretty. Uh, <laughs> but it's fully functional otherwise, other than the fact that uh, it needs cleaned out really bad. It's got an overheating problem, and uh, it will eventually crash. So it's got to be cleaned out. There's dust caked out the, the vent fan hole and everything. I think once it's cleaned, it will be running fine. So we got that. Then we start walking towards this way. Here is a G3 Indigo slot load. I'm not sure which speed that is. And that one probably works. I've got one that doesn't quite work that's going to be a part system. So one of these work and the other one doesn't. Um, so there's an Indigo G3 iMac. There is a Blueberry G3 iMac slot load. This is the DV model, so this is a 400 G3. So that makes this my non-DV model, which is a 350 G3. And I think they both work. This one Michael Stanhope gave me. And this one um, Scott gave me. And um, so, yeah. And then here's some other part systems. I've got uh, two G4 Titaniums part systems uh, in this pile here. And then enough parts to make at least one almost complete uh, G3 clamshell. The thing is, um, <laughs> I have no screws for it. We're not going to count that as a part system or as a... Um, um, as a complete system, because it isn't, uh, but we could. But there's two parts, uh, titaniums, that sort of work. Uh, one's got a busted LCD. The other one is just in a mangled case. I think it works totally fine, though. Jay Fry gave me the other one, come to think of it. So there's two more part systems. Come into here, we have another G3 Indigo. Um, I think Scott gave me this one too, um, and, or he gave me that one over there, I'm not sure which. This, um, I think is a part system. Um, I think it runs, but it doesn't run right. One of these Indigos has a, a bad uh, analog board in it or something. The screen won't turn on uh, without playing a lot with it. Um, and one of these I think works fine, but it's got a bad hard drive. So the one with the bad analog board will probably, uh, I think is actually a better uh, model. I'll probably be moving the board into whichever other one works and have um, a Frankenstein system and a part system. So one's a part system and one's a semi-working system. Uh, <laughs> here is the G4, uh, no. 400, uh, I meant to say 400, 400 megahertz um, G3 slot load grape that Jay Bry gave me. Um, it works totally fine, no issues whatsoever. Works great, it's just got a bot uh, broken bottom foot on it. And then we have two uh, 1, 1 Mac Pros. One of these, Michael Stanhope gave me, it has no RAM uh, cards in it or anything like that. The logic board, I think, works, uh, but no RAM cards. We're calling that a part system. The other one I got for free when I went and bought two cinema displays for 40 bucks altogether. The guy tossed in the Mac Pro for free because the video card was fried. It's totally 100% functional except for the video card. So if I put a new video card in, I've got a working system, so we'll count that as a working system. So, that's all of them in this area. Let's walk back to where I store the other ones. And yes, a lot these boxes right here is stuff I moved in. But like these shelves and stuff, Dad had here. So, that's his mess. <laughs> it's hard to walk around here. This is why I don't film this area. <laughs> oh, look, my internet went out again. Well, so much for that. So, now, let's get into these systems here. Right here is a system that I got locally when I lived at my old house. 
This was a 733 first generation um, Quicksilver that the original owner upgraded to a dual one gigahertz. So I have a dual one gigahertz card I could stick into my dual one gigahertz, but uh, I need to find another second generation board. <laughs> so right now this is just a, a dual one gigahertz and a first generation board, F fully functional, works fine. Here is my first first Mac, if you don't count the Mac Plus next door. Uh, this is my first Mac, which was built out of parts. We've done a video on it. This is an iMac G4 headless. Um, it's one gigahertz. It works. Um, and you just gotta plug an external display into it. Wow, it's heavy. Okay. So now, we're getting the systems I have to re-identify. Oh look, my internet's back on. That's my access point. Uh, it syncs to my next door's internet for now. <laughs> and it uh, kicks on and off all the time, so I never have internet over here. Anyway, getting back to the point, this right here is my one gig uh, 1.5 gigahertz 12 inch aluminum, aluminum PowerBook G4. Uh, which was mangled up um, by many people through its lifetime, probably. And it's missing half the screws, but it's fully functional and it's got an SSD in it. We've done video, uh, a video on that. And under it we have, I'm not sure which is this, this is. This looks like, yeah, I think I know what this is. This should be my G3500 Snow, yeah. That's my G3500 Snow iBook. And then we're getting into my other iBooks. Over here we have, this is my G4800 iBook Snow. Nice, beautiful, pea colored yellow keyboard. Yeah, nice, very, very nice. Uh, and it's going to need a new keyboard. And then this should be, I can't remember. I think this is a system I got in the mail. This I'm pretty sure is my um, 1.33 um, early 2005 12-inch um, inch iBook G4. Um, it came to me, yeah, this looks like it. It came to me in pieces. The frame was shattered and uh, the hinge was broken. The LCD was busted. It didn't survive milling. I got a replacement LCD, uh, a new hinge, and um, I JB welded all the frame back together and it's totally fine now. I think this is it. I can tell by looking at the bottom. Yeah, it is. Cause uh, earlier ones had little holes in the uh, rings here, and this doesn't have that. And the battery's fully functional still, although it hasn't been charged in probably a year. Uh, but it holds like two hours of charge, it's a neat little system. Then here, we have, what is this one? I think this is my, yeah, this is my iBook G3 800 uh, 12 inch. And um, I actually bought it to compare it to the G4. And these, uh, the G4 and the G3 were both in the very first episode, the Power PC series as a preview and I never filmed them. <laughs> so, and one day, one day. So here we have my, I think it's a mid 2003, uh, 867 megahertz, uh, 12 inch PowerBook G4. And it, uh, gone, it went through even more hell than the uh, 1.5. Uh, and it, um, the guy apparently tried to remove the hard drive by pulling this up and it, it took a lot to get it in somewhat good shape. Uh, and I bought this because this is the smallest um, and most powerful mobile um, OS9 compatible laptop 
um, which it doesn't also it also doesn't officially support, but it does. It runs it fine. So yeah, you got that. And in fact, the uh, 800 G4 iBook um, also has the same thing. It's it supports OS 9 with um, a little quick hack. And uh, this um, actually it, it runs OS 9 great. Um, behind it, where all these were sitting, is the system I call Old Smoky. Uh, Michael Stanhope gave me this. This is a third gener um, a third revision, um, very late in the production run, um, early December 1998, I think. Um, third uh, third revision, uh, Power Mac G3 um, beige, and it fully works, but I'm going to turn it into a part system, but, uh, and uh, upgrade the system next to it with it, because the other one's in better shape, uh, but it's got older hardware, and we'll talk about that in a second. But um, it's fully functional, so we'll count it as a system. So that's my G3 Beige, uh, revision three. Let's put these back on here. It should be, let's do one more. And yes, I'll just leave them as a stack of three on each. So let's move back down here. This right here is my um, dual 550 G4 um, uh, gigabit ethernet. Um, oh, that reminds me. Once we cover this, we're gonna go back here real quick so I don't forget it. So this is the, uh, Gigabit Ethernet Dual 550 Overclock G4. Uh, we've done a few videos on. Pretty fun system. Let's move back over here really quick. And here, I forgot these two systems. I don't know why I forgot them. Here is the um, G4 Sawtooth uh, with, uh, I think it's a Sonnet 1.4 in it. Yeah, Sonnet 1.4, which I built up into a blue and white case. So we got that. And it sort of closes. And here is my Bondi Blue um, G3 Trayload iMac. And this is um, a um, Revision B. 233 gigahertz, uh, megahertz, megahertz megahertz 233 megahertz uh imac g3 um it works um in the optical drive i think died in it though so i never put the bottom back on it and right now has it just the bottom out of it um i gotta pull everything back out and try to figure out how i get the op optical drive working so let's get back over to this pal over here <sighs> Yeah, lots and lots of talking here. So, now let's get to these systems here. Here is my G3 clamshell Indigo that I've done some videos on. This has the XGA modded screen in it, so it's got a higher resolution. It's, um, what is it, a uh, 366 megahertz. Here is my, as nice as I can get, because this thing's built out of a ton of different parts systems, uh, G3300 blue, um, Blueberry. It's now almost virtually crack-free, because lots of parts systems. I rebuilt this thing a hundred times before I got it working properly. <laughs> so, it's fully functional. Except for, of course, the pad battery in it. And then, under that, is this. This is my G3 Wall Street PDQ 266, which will eventually be a 300. So that's a fully functional system. The other one was a part system. Um, and then under it is a system I named Harry. And that's in honor of the original owner, which I found out about. He was, uh, he died in his 80s. 
He bought this thing brand new. He was a graphic design artist. This thing was full of graphic design stuff and a whole lot of other stuff. So I named it after him uh, in honor of him. He, he sounded like he had a very neat life. This is a, uh, I think it's a 266 G3 beige, but this is the first revision, which is the most unreliable version, and it doesn't quite work right. Um, so we're going to be putting that into that eventually. Um, it's just, it's too big of a pain right now to try to get it to work properly. Um, and the first revision, no one really wants the first revision because it's that unreliable. So we're going to, uh, it's, it's almost the right color. It's, it's slightly, slightly yellowed, but it's, it's still mostly platinum. Um, so it's, you, you can't really tell even, uh, after I, Upgraded the uh, zip drive faceplate, which uh, is the original platinum color, except in certain lighting, you can't tell it's really got any yellowing to it. So it's it's almost almost like new on the outside. He took great care of it. Um, so let's move back over here. Now next door, I talked about having two of these. I actually only have one of the one next door, the G4500. This was the same generation, PowerBook G4, but this is actually a G4400. I forgot that. And it is almost fully functional. The only thing wrong with it, because it fully boots up and everything's working, the only thing wrong with it is the backlight, which is not working. The inverter has gone bad and replace the inverter, and this is a common thing on the first generation titaniums, uh, to replace the inverter, you literally have to take the entire thing apart and I don't feel like doing it. So I might just sell this thing as a part system. I don't think I need it as a part system, but it sort of works, well kind of as a working system. Yeah, it's kind of cheating, but it, it's still, it's, it works. If you plug a, a monitor into it, it will um, show it on there, and you can use it. So it, it's working. So under it, we have my G4 Digital Audio, which has a, oh, I don't remember, uh, a newer tech Mercury card in it, a uh, single uh, 1.46, I think, in it. It works fine. And then, behind that, uh, is one of the neatest machines I have in the collection that I've never gotten around to working on because the SCSI drive in it is dead. And this isn't an Apple product. This is one of the clone machines. I got a great deal on it. This is a UMAC Super Mac S900. I've got the uh, original uh, drive faceplate that goes here, too, in a box. Um, they, they're notorious for breaking off. That one has broken off and I'll have to figure out how to fix it. Probably baking soda and super glue. Um, but I've got it. And one day we will do a video on that because I've got stuff to upgrade this thing to a G4. And that's actually sitting over here. We'll show you that in a second. Um, above it is my dual 450 uh, G4 Cube, which uh, was custom built and stuff by me. I went through a lot of parts to get it to work right. Works totally fine. Amazing system. And then next to it is my 14 inch 1.42 iBook G4 in original box. So we got that. Oh, and speaking of original box, let's once again leave the pile of Macs over here. Because <laughs> I forgot another one. Urgh. I forgot this. My G4 Yikes in original box. This is a Yikes 400 Power Mac G4 um, graphite. So we got that too. And now back over here again. Um, keeping track of all these is a pain. So, what is under 
the iBook and the original box. That would be my Power, Power Mac G3 Blue and White, my first one, which was in the um, G3 Blue and White Vintage Apple Vault. Um, it's got a Yikes G4 in it, which is overclocked to 450, I think. And uh, it works totally fine. I was going to put my Sonnet G5, uh, G4 500 in it, but I decided against it. It is going into my Molar Mac. So, yeah, there's that. And then here's a Parch G3 system, and there's not much left of it. I don't know if we should really count it as a system, because uh, there's not much left in it. Um... Just uh, some fuzzy hard drives, the power supply, and the, I think that's a broken optical drive. And that's it. So, uh, I guess we can count it as a part system. Um, so, yeah. Then above it, we have, let's see here, I have to look on the backs to tell the difference. Difference? Well, I can tell it from the front. This is a G4, this is an Intel, that's an Intel, and that's a G4. So, this is a G4 1.42 Mac Mini, um, and this one is the one that runs OS 9. You can run OS 9 on these now, and I need to do a video on it one day. Um, it runs it beautifully, except for the fact you can't get sound to work on it, which is annoying, but they probably will eventually fix that too. And then we have, which one is this one? This is the, <laughs> these two were experiments. Um, this one started out as a two comma one. I flashed it to a one comma one and stuck a course, a core duo in it just to see if you could do it. And now this is a one comma one core duo system. <laughs> kind of a waste of time, but it was fun. Um, and then this one was the topic of the 32-bit CPU Mac series. Um, it got flashed to a 2 comma 1. It's got a uh, 2.33 uh, T7600 or something in it, in it, uh, and an SSD. It runs really fast. I think that has an SSD in it too. Um, nice system. And then I've got another G4. Mini 1.42. I'm looking for a 1.5. I still haven't found one. It seems like everyone can find them but me. So, yeah. Got that. That one's running Tiger and Leopard. Um, we got these. And then we get to one of my most painful Macs. This one's so hard to look at because this was under the table and it collapsed. <laughs> um, this is the earliest production blue and white I've ever seen. This was made in mid-December 1998, and it was—it's still fully functional, but it's—it didn't survive the collapse very well. There's only one handle left on it. The feet are totally broken off. This was, I, th I think this is a 350 or a 300, I can't remember. Uh, what's the sticker say on the back? It says 350, so it's a 350. Um, this was built a few weeks after that one was built, and as you can see, that's a big difference. It was still built a few weeks before the announcement of it, too. So this was already in existence when Steve Jobs. Uh, uh, I'm getting tired. When Steve Jobs announced the system, this was already in, ex in existence and ready to be shipped out that day. So this probably got shipped out that day. Pretty neat history there. I'll get this back to its original glory one day. I just gotta get new feet for it and a new handle. And then we've got my two really, really neat uh, G4 um, Quicksilvers. And these are two LCDs that go to those two iMacs with the busted LCDs. Um, I got these really cheap from a fan on low-end Mac. 
He uh, basically sent it to me for about half the price you'd get one for eBay. He sent both of them to me. So <laughs> I, I'm still very grateful for that. Uh, I've got to figure out who sent it to me. Um, and when I do the video on fixing those, but these are just the LCD still. But anyway, back to this. Here is the uh, G4 uh, Quicksilver that I got from Harun Abdullah uh, locally back when I lived at my old house. This has a uh, sweet multi port in the front of it, but um, it's also got a dual Sonnet 1.8 in it. Really fun machine to play with. It now has a uh, TI-4600 in it. And then next to it is a, another uh, system that um, it fleet and it's fleeting me who I bought it off of. Um, I'll have to uh, thank him in subtitle here. Uh, sorry that I forgot who it was. This was a few months ago. I unboxed this one um, and added the zip drive to it. This is also a Sonic Dual 1.8 Quicksilver. Works totally fine. Um, you need some TLC on the inside though to make it really reliable. And then, uh, before we show you what I think's the last Mac, let me think really quick, because I'll speed this up. Let me think if there's any other I forgot. I don't think there was. So, the last Mac. Oh no, there's more sitting on top of this Mac too. <laughs> so we'll have to go through those too. The, this is my 3.1 Mac Pro, uh, which has been partially gutted when I moved over to my 4.1 flash to a 5.1. And then um, I never got around to rebuilding it so I could use it like the uh, other Mac Pro. So I'll have to rebuild it one day and use it as a folder or something like that. It's still got a boot drive in it, but I don't think it actually has an OS on it. It's got two drives in it, I think. Yeah, that that actually might be a boot drive. It probably has El Capitan on it. And then this had something on it, I think. Yeah, I, I was going to put a new OS on it, and I never did. But uh, I got to get a GPU for it. I think it might have. Yeah, it's got a 2600 in it. I could just use the 2600, but then it's, there's not much of a point in running it because 2600 sucks. <laughs> so this is going to be the card that uh, upgrades the clone system to a G4. That's going to be fun. I've got two of these actually now. This one's still sealed in the box. I'll be doing an unboxing of this one day. It's going to be fun to experience. Here's one of my two first-generation um, Apple TVs. Technically a Mac on the inside, but we're not going to count it as a Mac. So we'll just set that to the side. And I just realized there are some missing systems here. Where are they? Oh, there they are. Before we cover these, let's go back over here and move these LCDs off to the side. Because I forgot these systems. This system right here is my early 2008 MacBook, um, 2.4 gigahertz. And under it is the early 2009 MacBook, which was the first modern Mac I got. When I graduated college, I bought this with my college graduation money. And uh, when I was going to other classes, when I went to the next college, this was my system I carried with me. And it served me well, but also went through heck. As we can see, it's I dropped it a lot. And the whole frame is bent right here. The optical drive won't take discs anymore because the whole hole is warped shut basically and this actually went through two lcds because i broke two of them <laughs> it was rough on this system but it otherwise was, it was it's still fully functional uh and it's still fully functional now it's it's got no problem with it again 
um, other than the bent frame, the bad, bad screen hinge is really floppy. But yeah, first modern day Mac. So those, I can't believe I almost forgot those. Let's move this panel back over here. And show off the last ones here. This right here is, what is this? This is a 14 inch G3 iBook 600. Yeah, this is my 600. Pretty nice system. Other than the tape glue on it, it's actually in really good shape. I just gotta clean it. And then under it is the last Mac, I think, in my collection that I can think of right offhand. This is a second generation MacBook 2 comma 1 black book, which is also fully functional. It, it's just now the battery that was in it is now in the other black book. Um, and it's a little bit worn out, but it's fully functional. And it's still, it's still a black book. It looks neat. It runs, I can't remember, a Mountain Lion and um, Windows 10 on it. Fun. So, yeah, that's, I think, the entire collection. I don't know how many Max that is, um, but I will tally it up in the video. And uh, it might surprise me. I might have less than I thought I did, <laughs> but I doubt it. I probably have more than I thought I did. So, um, let's wrap up the video. Okay, guys, so there are, I just remembered, I have uh, another system on the way, and there might be another one. I might have to add that into a description here if I have forgotten another one. But there are at least two, three other systems, um, two that I haven't officially bought yet, um, but are probably going to be bought. I've got another uh, digital, um, no, uh, another gigabit ethernet coming possibly from Nick Bustamante. Uh, we haven't finished talking about the shipping yet, so I haven't paid for it. So we can't count it yet, so we won't count that. But we got that coming, probably. And then I also have another um, single 1.6 G, uh, 1.8 G5 Power Mac. I found another one, believe it or not, and it's in great shape. And if that makes it to me in one piece, we might be using the other one as a part system, but we can't count that one yet either. But there is one coming. It's coming in the mill, and it's an extremely rare system. It is an iBook G3 uh, Gemini, um, a Gemini iBook G3, which uh, was a system made by uh, the company Gemini, which is now defunct, if I remember correctly. Uh, and it was meant for special needs people and people in, in the um, medical field. And it basically is a tablet made out of an iBook G3 clamshell. Really neat. And also basically the most expensive Mac I've ever bought. Again, you need to stop doing that because it's not cheap. <laughs> but uh, it's worth it because it's supposed to come with everything except the original disks, but it's got the original software so I can back that up as long as it survives the mail trip. So we'll have a complete system to show you guys and that's gonna be fun. But um, yeah, uh, so that's uh, the last Mac that we can officially count because that is coming in the mail. And I don't think there's anything else coming in the mail, but if there is, I'll let you know right here. But yeah, that's the end of today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed the tour of my Mac collection. I think that's all of my Macs, I hope. Uh, and I kind of look like a hoarder, don't I? But no, most of that mess in there is from my dad. And I'll sort it out, figure out what I want to keep. And the rest of that's probably going to recycling or something. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it. Um, 
it's just a big mess in there. Um, and yes, I, I might still look like I'm order because I have all these Macs, but it's that's the problem with being a Mac collector. You get a lot of Macs. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Anyway, guys, so that's the end of today's video. I hope you enjoyed the tour uh, and a little bit of a behind the scenes look of where I live, how I film and all that stuff. You get to see what the studio currently looks like. And no, the studio won't look like this much longer. Um, once I get my uh, electrician in to rewire that back wall, I can probably move the rest of the tables in here. And I also have to bring in my table from my old house, which is 15 feet long. <laughs> I mean, it, 13 feet long, it's really long. It also needs flattened out. It's an Ikea table, so they warp. Uh, it's bowed in the center, but it's still a good table. It's just everything kind of means. <laughs> and um, that's actually the table, one of the tables that collapsed, uh, it, it was associated with one of those. They're not super great. I'm not keeping anything valuable on top of them or underneath of them, probably. We'll see. I, if I ever reinforce it, you know. But this place will be built up and fixed up. And uh, there won't be an echo anymore. Uh, the lighting will be better. But I can't do anything until everything gets wired. Uh, again, um, this house has a lot of wiring issues. But um, nothing's caught on fire yet, thank goodness. Um, but yeah, I think that's I think that's every Mac. So let's wrap up the video by saying, don't forget, guys, I am now sponsored by SellYourMac.com. So if you have an Apple device you'd like to sell, go to SellYourMac.com slash RockyMods and sell them something. It will help me out. It will help you out because you'll be making money. Also, don't forget to uh, check out my Patreon if you haven't yet. Um, you don't have to support me, but it would help the channel along, help me buy more of this junk. Um, fun junk, but junk uh, in the eyes of a lot of people. Not to you guys, probably. It's a neat collection, I'm sure. Uh, yeah, I think it's a neat collection. But, um, yeah, if you want to help me buy more junk, come over to Patreon. Help support me. <laughs> Um, also, you don't have to, as long as you're watching my videos, I'm getting revenue to help buy this stuff, keep the channel going. But if you want to see these videos a day early, sometimes even earlier than that, it's another reason to join Patreon. But if you're fine with just waiting on them to randomly pop up on my channel since I don't have a set schedule, um, you can do that too. So, yeah. Uh, but if you want to check out my Patreon, there will be a link at the end of the video and also in the description below. And that's the end of today's video. This has been a Wrecking Mods video.